I visited Nicola de Vesula in Kent at her studio. Oh, hi Emily. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come in. Without um, considering myself a watercolourist, I like using watercolour and gouache, which is of course the opaque form of watercolour. One has this idea of having to do a watercolour correctly, mm. and I've always rebelled against that. An Indian artist suggested that I draw with a brush, because I'd always used a pencil or a pen, um, and to actually draw to make that line, I, I, I think that was really important from then on. What I do quite often is um, I'll take a block of watercolour, this is cadmium red, and I love the cadmium colours because of the stability that they have. Then I use my nail <sighs> as a palette, which is quite funny. And then I, then I draw. I really like Nicola's work because I like the gaze that she has. She draws a lot of people and faces and really beautiful ways that she adds detail with really fine paintbrushes. I really enjoy working at this scale because of the intimacy between myself, the paper and the paint. You use quite a few different um, mediums in your work. Yeah. Which are your favourite ones to work together? Watercolour and pencil, really simple pencil. And I could also use biro. I'm very particular about paper and, and over the years I've bought really expensive paper and found it so difficult to work with. And perhaps a very expensive paper, it's almost intimidating and I've never been able to feel quite at ease with that. And the best paper I've worked with has been the most simple paper. This is really ordinary paper but it's so lovely. She comes back to work, if she hasn't worked on it for years and years, she'll suddenly just pick something up and think I can add something to that's really nice. This work I started in 1988, that's um, 23 years ago, um, and just finishing this work more recently. So layers of time. So layers are quite important within your work? Yes, definitely. That's how I work generally, is that I will make, um, make a drawing or make a mark on a piece of paper and, and then come back to it um, several days later, several years later. This could take maybe a year to get this far, and yet the finished work looks like it's done quite quickly, but it's over a period of time. You often have like quite a bit of white space yes. in your pieces. Yeah, um, that's really important. It's what's left left out that's often almost more important than what I put in. I've worked on line paper for years. I've got um, some early sketchbooks where I've worked on the line paper. And of course, living here now with the horizon line, um, it's like multiple horizon lines going down the paper. Oh, and this is my view. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's very beautiful. Mm. I found it really interesting seeing the environment that Nicola works in, an environment that inspires her so much. When you see her work and you see her studio, you see the the interaction that, that it inspires her so much. What she's what she's seeing out of her window, and even the smallest things in her studio, really work like crop it in her work quite a lot. There's a history of British artists using watercolour for landscapes. Does this inspire you? I used to really love looking at the watercolours by Constable and Turner. I, I've always really loved sketchbooks, so um, from that angle, yes, I've always been interested. But when it becomes more refined and finished work, I'm, I'm personally not so interested. You can only paint or draw the impression of something, but there's something really lovely about just taking a brush and then just these sort of horizontal sweeps and then that's the sea. You know. What I do also to make it more opaque is to use, mix a little bit of white gouache in to create um, a, a, a white light, a, a opaque light. I think the way I work now, it's, it's very inward mm. and the line that comes out, it's a bit like um, the spider emitting the thread to make the web, it's, this line comes out from myself, it mm. seems to come out from within. She has got an interesting way of sort of mixing the watercolours because um, she lives near the sea, she uses um, shells. 
Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of the way Nicola Dervishula uses watercolour and um, what inspires her and what I kind of what I experienced when I went to visit her in her studio. Often she doesn't fill a whole page with sort of an image. She'll just have like something really small in the middle. The boys did a sort of tested trying to do this, the way that Nicola uses the watercolours, her technique. I've got some really thin paintbrushes for you. This is sort of the thinnest one. So if you maybe have, all have a go with that one. I've asked the students to try to get used to using really small paintbrushes and also to try using watercolour on different types of paper. I think they found it interesting, but probably found it quite hard because um, doing quite small painting is quite um, different. But I think they enjoyed it and it was good to sort of learn a different technique and um, sort of how a different artist uses watercolour. Being in this project has definitely changed the way I think about watercolours. Um, I think it's made me realise that so many more contemporary artists do use it and sort of the different ways that it can be used because I use it in sort of one way and it's been really inspiring.